a lot of people watching you. You felt like you're under a ton of pressure. And then you, you chucked, you just chucked the whole YouTube channel. Too smart, man. I'm a genius. Too smart for your own good. <laughs> well, I guess I'll, I'll hang out with you. Micah here, and we're gonna take our premier journey to find out why a guy who had 30K subs and was making $4,000 a month just walked away from his YouTube channel empire. Uh, the guest today is EJ, Elijah, the Elijah Talk, Elijah J, lots of different names. But one thing I can tell you, this guy is super talented and super nice and super generous with his time. Um, I think you're really gonna enjoy the interview. Let me know what you think, like, subscribe. And without further ado, let's go to the other side of the YouTube. Good question. So how did you get started in YouTube? I feel like I got started um, how every kid before money came in. Uh, I was kind of, I started my YouTube channel in 2011. It was originally called The Elijah Talk. And it was just a vlog of a ADHD kid uh, <laughs> who didn't know how to put together coherent sentences and, you know, just really expressing myself. I love to do sketches. Um, I was really into the arts and movies. So I did like short films and, you know, for, uh, I think I was 14 at the 15, 14 at the time. So they weren't very good, but they were, they were the window into um, having a good time on the internet, uh -huh. just being myself. Yeah. So what did you want to get out of it when you started it? I think it was just a way to express myself and I've always felt it's very cliche but like the black sheep of the family but uh -huh. also not. I, I was very anxious as a kid so I didn't know how to really open up to other people and the internet made it a really easy thing to do because you know there's a screen between us it's not the same thing for some reason it just tricks my brain that social anxiety kind of vanishes that's what you wanted okay yeah. um and did you get it Yes, and then the option of money came into, into the view. After maybe a few years of just having fun, and, and I also, I'll be honest, I did see it as a platform to entertain. And I mean, that's kind of what I, if I could do anything for the rest of my life, it would be to be entertaining, no matter if that, if I'm being laughed at or laughed, uh, being like laughing with, like as long as I'm entertaining, that's really, all that matters to me and what I was kind of bred in my mind to do or what I just like to do. And I don't know, I was just overwhelmed with wanting to make it my career. And it turned less into me expressing myself and more uh, just making whatever, you know, to get as many views as possible. So then you started to get money. And that yes. was problematic? Uh, no money, no problems? Was that, was you the guy? Was that you? <laughs> Yeah, I can quote a rap lyric. Uh, I wouldn't say it's more, it's weird, right? It, I was making maybe, at a point I could sustain myself, I would say in 2016, 17, I can sustain myself. I was making anywhere between what? two grand to four grand a month yeah. off of YouTube. Wow. And yeah. that was mostly from brand deals and oh. less ads. Uh, thankfully, I had no idea I was a marketer and pretty much honestly what most YouTube channels are or they're just small marketing agencies. So I knew how to pitch and deliver and I knew my worth from doing magic. And sometimes you just say, what's your budget? <laughs> and they were like, my budget's $1,500. And I was like, I was going to ask for 200. I'm glad I asked what your budget was. Right. I was always scrambling because I was going for views. Money was fine, but I still wasn't fulfilled exactly. It's kind of like any job. If you're not fulfilled in it, then you're going to hate it, have a mental breakdown and leave. And yeah, so that's what that's what it was like for a while. That's the feeling really set in when I started to do animated videos. Um, I would do animated story time videos. If you've heard of Swoozy, he actually flew me out. So let me rewind a little bit. I entered this contest called Buffer Fest and you could submit like a video I submitted for the comedy section. My video was about Donald Trump winning the election before, you know, when it was a joke. Oh my God, <laughs> you have to put that back up. It, it's, it's too real. It's too real now. Okay. It's, <laughs> oh, okay. um, if I'm, yeah, it's, 
yeah, it's too real. Um, it's still funny. I, it was a great video. I won uh, the comedy award and Susie saw it and he was like, I want to make it for my channel. It's like, hell yeah, man. I have no idea who you are, but you seem cool. Uh, that's kind of how I navigate life. If you seem cool, I guess I'll, <laughs> I'll hang out with you. And um, that ended up being a collaboration with Obama. And so it was like, he no was way. interviewing Obama and then what? it would cut to us. He flew me from Los Angeles to back to my hometown in Connecticut to film in our basement to get that the same look. Um, it was a great time. He's like one of my favorite people. Uh, he's so sweet and kind and he uh, gave me direction, which I really appreciate him for. And um, I was like, yeah, I'm gonna try making animated story time videos. I did my first one. I got like five X the views I would usually do. And so I did that, uh, but then after a certain amount of time, I started getting more people and I'm like, this is not what I want to do. Like, if I have a million people right now, this is not something that, it, this is not something I want to do for the rest of my life, you know? And it was almost like, it was almost like I was stealing something because it was, it was such an easy format and it wasn't me exactly. I mean, half of the stories I, I told were made up and it would just works of fiction. Um, which I guess is like the point of YouTube is to be entertaining, right? So it doesn't really yeah. matter. Uh, but it just felt so like inauthentic. And I just, I felt like I was being slimy. And I just, I, I just didn't like it. And I just cracked on the pressure. And plus, if I have like a million people watching me, you know, I feel like I want to do something that I'm proud of or yeah, um, yeah just something that I, I, I'll be proud of. Like one of my most famous videos, I had like a million views was, peeing wow. my pants on purpose in middle school. I kept it up, yes, I kept it up until I wiped my channel clean. Right, so even though you didn't like it, you just kept it up. Yeah, I was- Or you, you only know, didn't like it in retrospect. Yeah, exactly, it was growing my channel, and you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, and I had a few years of hindsight, and it's just like, I don't, I don't know, I just don't want to be known for pissing my pants, I guess. That's like- I think that's reasonable. Moving on. You had a lot of people watching you. You felt like you're under a ton of pressure. And then you and then you you chucked you just chucked the whole YouTube channel. When was that? Uh when I moved back home. Like I just thought. now. Like so I'm catching you just now. Like literally a month ago, if I would have looked, I would have yeah. seen the channel and I would have had how many I, yeah, okay. if you don't feel comfortable answering, it's fine. How many followers did you have? Uh I probably had about 30K and I lost about 5K since I started re-uploading, but it's a different type of content. I'm not surprised. It's not really that entertaining. It's just like me rambling about what's on my mind for five to 10 minutes. And some people find it interesting. Some, you know, there's an audience out there for it, I'm sure, but. Uh, I probably yeah. watch you ramble. Moving on. All right, your, so your favorite vid? My favorite. Vid? Favorite video. Don't they say vid? The kids don't say vid anymore. <laughs> I can't, I don't think we can use vid anymore. It's too close to COVID, you know? Okay. <laughs> What's your favorite variation of vid? I don't know, the long Your COVID. favorite variant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely Delta, because it flies with you. All right, okay. uh, comedy. All right, um, my favorite video. Recently, I saw a video that was, <laughs> that was Bo Burnham special, if he just shut the F up. Uh, I don't know if you've seen Inside, but no. it's a, no. like, he has a vid where he's, He's uh, writing, um, his the initial song is about him not knowing if comedy is okay to do in a time like this, like in, in the COVID time. Like, is it okay right. to make jokes when everybody's dying? And there's a part where he's like, um, he's kind of reflecting on how white guys have always had the mics for, you know, countless of years. And maybe he should just shut up because, you know, everything could be already said and he's just another white guy. What new opinion is he adding? But then, of course, he starts singing again. But at the video, it just cuts right off. He's like, maybe I should shut up. And it's just the end and rolls credits. And it's it was just like the funniest 30 seconds in the, in the past five years that I've seen. Yeah, it sounds pretty awesome. I'll put a card up. It is it is only funny if you have the context for okay. the video. For this yeah, special. you did make it sound very funny, though. <laughs> but with more context, I could see it would be more amusing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So your current plan then is so it's going for existential dread, five minutes of existential dread. 
that, that is that is pretty much that is it even like two days ago i'm like less existential i'm like i should delete those videos <laughs> you know it's like oh really it's a never-ending wow. shift of mind i think um yeah it just takes time to sit down and i'm never really sure what i want to say like i feel like sometimes i just say a lot of nothing and i just like the attention or just being able to chat into a mic you know i think that's just that's just half of it um but yeah it's just all about i'll just post whatever i feel like and i just feel sometimes it's not entertaining and i miss being entertaining versus being an existential like catalyst moving on i'm writing i mostly just write graphic novels i think I genuinely think novels are going to be phased out. Well, I mean, there'll be novelty, and then I think we'll have... No pun intended, to be clear. No, there was a pun intended. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> to be clear. To be okay. clear. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> novelty, okay. But I, I do think um, print media is going to be uh, <laughs> novelty. And, um, yeah, I think the future is, you know, digital media. And also, I'm not smart enough to write a novel so, okay i like screenplays and then making pictures uh, the person who's an artist is really amazing she's amazing brenda i found her on upwork.com can uh -huh. i love that site you have to dig through a lot of um hay to find a needle but she's she's amazing she like brings the exact ideas i have to life in just a, a, an amazing way but yeah that comic is my first project and surprisingly uh, I feel actually very confident about it. It's a little bit slow in some places, but it's a thriller. Um, and it's really out there, which I love, you know. I'm very, I would say I'm an absurdist or surrealist uh, in, when it comes to writing or just any projects I do. I'm starting to release it out now. Uh, I'm actually releasing it out on Webtoons for free, just cause I don't, I don't, I don't have an audience that would want to pay or buy it. And, I didn't think it was good enough to pitch to a, like image or an actual publishing company for like the first story. But I have a few other stories that I would probably uh, end up pitching and having a good time. I just started learning how to draw because paying people to do artwork is very hard or is expensive. Yeah. My son has just uh, finished Lord of the Flies last night and was complaining about the lack of pictures. See, we need more pictures in these very serious books that change the lives of our children. I'm like a, a grown kid. I like looking at pictures and reading. I think most of us are grown kids. I agree. Exactly. That's why I think it's the future. So that's chapter one. How many chapters are gonna are gonna be? So Five, you've written yeah. it. It's done? I've written the first act. Um it's being illustrated now. So it should be out by the in the next four five, four months, I think it should all be done. I'm releasing it like weekly um, episodes, as I call them. It's like snippets of a chapter weekly. Okay. Um, I think it's good though. I think it's good that you're paying your artist because artists need work, right? Absolutely. For them. And you'll get your audience, will see it for free, and then you'll have a, like a sort of the, your sizzle reel, your sizzle paper. Yeah, it's like this is my first thing that I did. If you think this was good, then my next thing's probably gonna be good too, right? That's how it works, I think. Yeah. For someone who's angsty, you really have it all together. <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> Great job. Great creative outlet. You're very personable. Um I mean, yeah. I think what's, you're in pretty good shape. What's, what's the point of the angst? I think I have too much existential dread. I'm too smart, man. I'm a genius. Be smart for your own good. Uh, it is hard. I, I'll have days where I'm just like, I'm really a human, huh? That's crazy. All right, I think that's it. Uh, now I will sincere. I was gonna fake thank you, but now I'm gonna. No, serious. All right. So, it took so up like two hours of your time, by the way. No, this was awesome, and thank you for helping me solve my problem. Of, uh, I think at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter as long as it makes me happy. If I can talk about dark jokes out of it, then that it is what it is. Yeah, you do what you want to do. You got to do what Especially, you want to do. Especially, I mean, you're, yeah, for all you 25 year olds out there, you can create, have a creative outlet where you're not dependent on co revenue for it. You are I in the driver's that. seat. You're where you want to be. Yeah, I think it's really important. I think anybody who says, 
quit your job and pursue a, like a creative thing is out of their mind. So st I have never been more stable in my life having a normal job and using my creative outlets as creative outlets. And if it pans out that it makes money, then that's great. We love you, YouTube. Don't demonetize us. Hey, you made it all the way to the end of the video, or maybe you just fast forwarded. In any case, I want to thank Elijah because it was not that clear when I said thank you, thank you during the interview. It sort of got muffled. Um, I want to say sorry we ended up on sort of a dad note of being responsible, but hey, I'm a dad. Can't blame me for that. And I want to thank you guys for coming with me um, on this voyage to the other end of the YouTube. I hope you liked what you saw. If you did, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. Take it easy, guys. Until next time, this is Micah, and I will see you on the other side of the YouTube.